Lee Sager covered many sports throughout his career, but what impact did he have on the NBA specifically? You know, Maggie, I don't know that he would have resonated quite as deeply if he hadn't made the transition to the NBA, if Turner hadn't found that home for him. Because you know, early in his career, you know, a lot of producers around the country at sort of TV stations, they were – you know, the emphasis was on the anchors and the broadcasters sort of looking the same, sounding the same. And a lot of them actually didn't like Sager's act. They didn't like the colorful wardrobe and kind of, you know, sort of that, that fun air that he brought to it. They wanted to make him more serious. They wanted to mute um, sort of his fashion statements. And I think that in some ways the NBA was the perfect home for him. Um, you know, there's something about the league in terms of embracing – people of difference, embracing sort of uh, that kind of personal sort of personal statement that people like to make. And with Sager, obviously, it came across through the wardrobe, um, but I think there was more to it than that. And the NBA really became, it became the perfect home for him. And it became, I think he became one of those people where, I mean, I know I did a story about him in the spring and players would say, when you were interviewed by Craig Sager, you felt like you'd made it. You know, you felt like you were really a part of the NBA and he sort of became the fa part of the fabric of the league in that way. You know, Lee, despite his flashy suits, when it came to his reporting and his courtside interviews, Sager never made it about himself. How much did his reporter chops and his interview skills in many ways outshine his colorful outfits? I don't know that they did at the time. I think people have now looked, now looked back and sort of appreciate that more. I think that the... I mean, look, he was known for a long time because of the clothes. I mean, that was what distinguished him. And I think one of the, you know, one of the beautiful things about this fight that he had is that it did give people a lot of opportunity to kind of go back and think about him and appreciate, you know, what he was beyond that. And he was. He was a he was a dogged reporter. He asked tough questions. He was kind of old school, though, in a way where he was friends with his subjects. I mean, he would take NBA players to Jocks and Jill's, the bar, sports bar he owned in Atlanta. Um, you know, he would hang out with Dennis Rodman, and he was friends with these people. I, I mean, I spoke with him about that, where you know, he, he never viewed himself as the objective journalist. He viewed himself as a partner with the NBA, as TNT is a partner with the NBA.